everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us again on another episode of our Preferred Pest podcast. I'm Dawn Cooper Ryder here with Preferred Pest Control, and today I've got uh, my friend and coworker Sean Robinson with me. He's been one of our pest control experts here at Preferred for a little over nine years now. Just celebrated an anniversary at the yep. end of August, I think. Um, <clears throat> So he's coming to us with a ton of experience, um, and in particular today, we're going to be talking about spiders. So um, the fall spider invasion has begun. We're getting all kinds of phone calls about it, um, lots of concerned customers about um, their spiders coming in and around their home, what they can do about it, and that sort of thing. So we're going to talk all about spiders today, um, what kind of spiders we've got around here, what you need to be looking for as far as a homeowner and how you can prevent them from getting into your house and um, causing problems for you and your family. So, Sean, um, thanks for participating in this with me today. I appreciate your help with spiders. Um, I I don't know nearly as much as Sean does about spiders, so that's why I've asked him to to join us today because he he can really deep dive into some spiders. Um, And for most people, they're all scary. Like, we don't really want to get that close enough to like really worry about what kind of spider it is but there are a couple of spiders that you do need to be a little bit more cautious about so we want to make sure we talk about those but there's also a lot of benefits to spiders so um while we don't want them necessarily in our house uh we don't need to kill them all either so sean's going to talk to us somewhat beneficial Some of them can be beneficial. So Sean's going to talk to us today about that. And we're going to start by talking about the types of spiders we have here in Northwest Missouri um, and which ones we're seeing the most of right now. So you want to talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing out in the field and what you're hearing about from our customers? A lot of what we're seeing right now is it's that time of year where a lot of insects are beginning their overwintering like cycle to where they're starting to come to the houses they're starting to get on the exterior siding looking for ways to get into the house to stay warm for the winter and for a spider that's just ringing the dinner bell for them so they're moving closer to the house they're moving closer to the 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 windows the bushes and stuff all the areas that the insects are moving around on and they're they're feeding and loading up for the winter so yeah um it's been pretty nice here this week still um we've had really great weather but i've already been able to see all the asian lady beetles that have been out flying around lots of box elder bugs stink bugs all that kind of stuff is really coming um out right now it's really headed toward the siding of your house and the windows and that kind of thing. Um, and that's mainly what spiders are, are eating right now, right? Like yeah. They're after all those kind of bugs. So <clears throat> it's literally like the side of your house is a buffet for them. Um, and they're just trying to load up and stay healthy for winter. Yeah, spiders don't have to eat like constantly. They would like to eat constantly, but it's not a have to. So if they eat a lot at this time of the year it can sustain them for long periods of time without where they're not able to find as much food during the winter months so okay so they can load up eat a bit now and then they're good for several months over the winter when they aren't quite as active um, on things okay um so let's talk about the kinds of spiders that that you're getting calls about i know Um, one of the most researched articles on our website has been the the most um, clicked on article blog article that we've have uh, since we first posted it and I think 2019 it continues to be our number one red blog article but it's about how to tell the difference between a house spider and a brown recluse so I know that is a hot topic on everybody's mind because that article keeps getting searched and and the Black Widow, I know you'll talk a little bit about that. It's definitely more distinctive and easier for people to tell, but the brown recluse is a little trickier. So um, can you talk to us a little bit about the the Black Widow and brown recluse before we get into some of the other spiders? <laughs> the Black Widow, it is very iconic looking. Everybody's seen the pictures of the Black Widow. They're in drawings and art 
and everywhere and everybody knows that look that spindly legs the large abdomen with the red hourglass everybody knows what those look like but as far as like coming in contact with a black widow especially in this part of the country it's rare you're not going to see them very often Mm -hmm. i mean if you're out flipping logs in the woods you might find one but i've been doing this for a little over nine years and i've actively been looking for a black widow i kind of want one as a pet so (laughs) i haven't found one yet uh yeah welcome to pest control we're a little (laughs) bit weird like that black brown recluse on the other hand brown recluse are extremely common spiders yeah especially in this the midwestern kind of belt of they are they're everywhere it's one of those that a lot of people worry about the brown recluse but they're surrounded by them at all points of the day, mm. whether they realize That'll it or not. That'll freak you out, everybody. <laughs> You're surrounded by them at all times of the day. That's great. Um, they are a very, very common spider, but they get their name because of their habits. They are very reclusive. They are not a web building, a web hunting spider like you see, like the orb weavers or even the black widow, where they spin their webs in order to catch their food they don't do that they are an ambush predator so they wait in hiding like in the dark under boxes under rocks under whatever they're they find a shelter and wait for food to run out in front of them and then they jump out and catch it and Mm -hmm. they hunt that way they do lay or they do spin webs but only to lay their egg sacs. They're very loose hanging webs. They're not like suspended between two structures. They're Mm -hmm. just like hanging in a corner. The mouthpiece on a brown recluse is, the mouthpieces are very small Mm -hmm. and they don't, they're not the largest spider in the world. They're kind of, they're small, their mouths are small. So in order to inflict a bite on a human it's almost probably 90 percent of all brown recluse bites is because the flesh has been forced into that spider's mouth by either like reaching under grabbing them and like or rolling over on top of them put in a shoe yeah like you're like forcing them to bite you and where the bites for a brown recluse are fairly rare to uncommon the ones that actually become necrotic or that there's actual the ones that you hear about on facebook and all of your all of your friends and family have a story that they know about somebody who got bit those are extremely rare cases so a lot of times people worry about brown recluse just because of those stories and the names and Mm -hmm. stuff and they don't realize they're not they're not vicious like spiders they're not look running around going hey i'm going to bite somebody today they're just they're just trying to live their life chilling and <laughs> trying to eat they just get a bad rap but yeah well they do bite though and they can cause yeah. cause some injury it's just not like they're trying to go out and actively attack you no. it's more of a defense mechanism um but if you do get bit, you need to take Very it Very few insects are out there looking for a fight. Mm-hmm. And yellow jackets, that's about the ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're out there looking for a fight. But the spiders, usually, they, they just want to get away from you. Okay. All right. Um, well, other than brown recluse and black widow... We're seeing lots of other kinds of spiders right now. Yeah. Are, is every spider out right now, or is there certain kinds that are more prevalent in the fall? Well, it's not really that they're more prevalent. It's that in late summer, like August, September is, and I think usually sometimes in July, I think we had a little bit of an early hatch this year. Mm-hmm. But this is about the time when the breeding season and the hatching season and stuff is happening, or it's right afterwards. So 
there's more spiders at this particular time mm -hmm. and it's not that there there's more at your house but like i mentioned before with the insects coming in we're drawing more towards where we're at yeah so like the ones out there just chilling out in the forest there there's as many of them as there was before mm -hmm. but if you go out there and you start ringing the dinner bell for them and bringing other insects around they're going to start moving moving in. towards you makes sense makes sense so um We've been doing a lot of spider training here in the office with our technicians, just making sure that they're all up to speed and understand our treatment methods and types of spiders and all that kind of thing. And a couple of interesting facts that we've learned this week that came up um, was that there's always a spider at least uh, like three foot in your vicinity, like wherever you're sitting somewhere around you within three foot is a spider somewhere. Um, and I'm forgetting the other one. I'm forgetting the other little interesting tidbit. There was another little thing. Dang it. We'll have to cut this part out. Say, if you wanna... What was our other interesting tidbit about spiders besides they're always three foot around us? Oh, well, I'll come back to it. So anyways, there might have just been one interest. What? No, oh, no, I forgot. I wasn't talking about water. But anyways, we'll skip that part. Interesting fact about spiders. There was only one, apparently. Uh, one interesting fact about <laughs> spiders is that there's always one three foot around you. And ever since I've heard that, even though I'm in pest control, uh, I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye out for, for things, especially this time of year. Um, if you don't think about it, you don't notice it as much. Oh, just quit thinking about it? <laughs> yeah, until you roll over, and he's right there. Um, but... You kind of covered the why are we seeing so many right now. Their food supply is out, flourishing. They're all over the place, and so the spiders are just being attracted to the dinner bell. Essentially, they're coming. They're coming to eat. Um, oh, figured out the other the other thing. The other uh, the second interesting fact was that some spiders are never come in from outside. They've always lived in your house. They were born there, they live there, they die there. They, not all spiders that you see in your house have made their way in from outside. Some of them are in the attic or the crawl space and they just make it into the main floor. Yeah, a lot area. of your cellar spiders and your house spiders and stuff, they're not equipped to live outside. I mean, mm -hmm. they've spent their entire lives like in generations indoors yeah and They're they've indoor adapted to they've adapted to the lower food supply because you don't have as many insects and stuff running around inside as you would outside mm -hmm. they've adapted to the lower food supply they've adapted to the lower water the water availability and everything and they've made those ad adaptations to where they for generations, these spiders have never lived outside. Hmm. That's reassuring. <laughs> That's great. Um, so with all that spider... They're usually like little spindly things that can't hurt you anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say that, but some people, uh, a lot of people, uh, any kind of spiders, too many kind of spiders. So I used to be arachnophobic. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting career choice for someone who's been arachnophobic before. So how did you get over it? Because I'm sure a lot of people are I scared. Just, I just did it. You just put yourself out there. Yeah. When I first got hired here, my wife told me, she's like, you, you're not going to be able to do that job. I'm like, why? <laughs> she goes, you, you're you scared of bugs. You're scared of spiders. She goes, I can't, you can't even kill a spider around here. How are you going to do it? I was like, I, I'm going to have to figure it out. Yeah. And got to face just, your fears. After a while of doing it, like I was at a job one day and I looked down, there's a spider crawling up my arm and I just, I just kind of let it go onto the wall and just went about my job and I was like, man, you're supposed to kill those. Shots. I'd have screamed and cried and ran off. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've well, grown I'm, as a person. I'm glad, I'm glad you've made it over 
that fear. Yeah. That's great because I don't know how you would be in pest control if you're afraid of spiders. Um, but with all that being said, all the spider activity, um, all of the influx of their food supply, we really wanted to uh, put this together so that we could help you guys figure out how to keep spiders away from your property. So uh, Sean's put together a list of the top 10 ways to keep spiders out of your home, your garage, your business, wh wherever you don't want the spiders. So um, we're gonna go through some of these and then Sean, you can elaborate and kind of explain uh, a little bit about why these um, tips are important and how they can uh, keep spiders from being a problem. Um, so the, the number one way or the, the first thing on this list is to fill any gaps and cracks. So can you elaborate a little bit for us on that? So like anywhere walking around the exterior of your house, if you see any cracks in the siding or cracks in the foundation or anything that gives a entrance point to the inside structure of your house not only is that going to filling that up stop any spiders from coming in mm -hmm. but you're stopping any other pests from coming in also and any of the spiders that might be hunting that kind of pest okay so um because a lot of the insects right now like i spoke earlier about overwintering and everything they spend a lot of their winters inside the walls of your house like your box elder bugs your stink bugs your asian lady beetles mm -hmm. stuff like that they spend the winters like inside your walls inside your foundation and if we can keep those numbers down and not give them any place to be able to escape the cold mm -hmm. that they they're not equipped to deal with spiders can live out in the cold and they live year-round out there right. in that other insects aren't able to do that and keeping those numbers down eventually keeps the spiders down as well okay so filling um any gaps or cracks and like your siding uh, where your the mortar of your brick has gotten loose you've got a crack small even if it's a thin crack down the foundation I, or around like windows and stuff mm -hmm. like fill redo your caulking around your windows and stuff like that around um, your pipes and things that go around like you've yeah. got your utility lines and things that come in the house so making sure all that's sealed up like if you have like an edge of your siding or whatever or if you have a piece pulled up and you can get behind they can get behind the siding and yeah it doesn't take much no. um next he's got repair window screens and door sweeps so kind of kind of along the same lines uh they're just looking for ways in um some spiders are pretty tiny though could they get through just a regular window screen even if it window wasn't screens messed up the window screen itself no okay um they're pretty good at keeping stuff out but where it goes back to the the gaps and cracks where if the like a storm window isn't sealed against the house and mm -hmm. that that gap or that space in between that and the wall isn't filled that's how they get in okay. stuff. um window screens is something you really need to check throughout the season because there are some insects out there um wasp paper wasp grasshoppers stuff like that actually will eat the window screens like because oh. most of your window screens isn't made of like a metal anymore it's kind of a it's like a kind of some kind of fiber measure where i'm not sure what it's made out of mm -hmm. but they actually will sit there and eat through it like okay i've you can watch wasps sitting there eating through your screen and stuff huh. so I didn't know that it's something that it needs to be checked regularly uh, door sweeps, uh, the bottom of your garage doors, the, not only will that keep insects and spiders out, but that is a major entry point for rodents, which yeah. also is this time of year, rodents are starting to come in. Yeah. So and we a lot see that of these a lot on the garage doors, but yeah. you can also see it on any, any door into your property. Usually there's some sort of like plastic, um, material that's right along the base of the door or it's on the threshold of the door and just wear and tear over the years can tear that up rodents can gnaw at it and um, break it down and 
and then, then, I mean, not only will it help keep mice and spiders and all kinds of other bugs out, but it also helps with energy efficiency of your home, yeah. keeping it warmer. Well, a lot of these 10 ways to keep spiders away, if you go through these steps and you fix these things at your house, not only are you keeping spiders away, but you're also going to be keeping a lot of pests away. Yeah. It's a great home maintenance this time of year to do this before the, the snow and really cold weather sets in. Um, so number three on Sean's list uh, was your your lighting outside. So you want to talk a little bit about outdoor lighting? Yeah. The lighting doesn't necessarily attract the spiders. Okay. But if you go outside at night and you go or you look around like your exterior lighting, they're constantly being swarmed by moths and flying insects. Yeah. And you'll see a lot of times, especially this type of year, time of year, you'll have a area of your house that has like some bushing, mm -hmm. some bushes and stuff. Yeah. And you'll have your light up above it and you'll go out the next morning and the whole top of that, that bush will be covered in spider webs. Yeah. And it's just like a sheet over the top of them because the spiders are out there catching those flying bugs that are... Mm -hmm. Just waiting for them yeah. to drop so, down. So by keeping the lights down or using a filter over your lights or special... Like the yellow light like bulbs. Like the yellow bulbs or even just a um, some lights, the, the glass on the outside, you can get a replacement glass that filters light to where insects aren't attracted to it okay and just doing that i'll keep keep from bringing all those keep from bringing them feeder bugs closer to the side of the house yeah okay awesome um keep up with pruning was item number four on there yeah anytime you have stuff touching your house any like shrubs any trees any kind of plants touching your house mm -hmm. that's just giving them a, a way to your house other like it's giving them another pathway to your house okay so keeping that trim back is just a good way to so same spiders a, that are putting webs all over the top of the those shrubs if those shrubs are also pushed up against your siding and there's an opening there that's a real easy access for spiders or any of those feeder insects to it's like a little bridge right on into the house and I'll we'll go and talk about this a little more later further down the list but a lot of your um, a lot of times your your do-it-yourself uh, your do your do-it-yourself do pest control mm -hmm. kind of m methods a lot of them are through granulars and stuff like that that are on the ground okay if the, if the insect never has to touch the soil or never touches where any of these products have been applied mm -hmm. just by walking across a branch to your house yeah it's not There's nothing good anymore. nothing there to stop them yeah. or deter them okay so number five is uh getting your yard work done that's not a fun one nobody wants to do yard work especially you know on the weekend when it's nice you'd rather go I don't know, to a winery or pumpkin patch or something this time of year. But tell us why it's important to get our yard work done. A lot of insects, that one of their main food sources is decaying organic matter, decaying plants. Um, so if you have dead leaves and stuff like that up against the side of your house, mm -hmm. as those leaves start to decay and break down, that is a food source for certain insects like your crickets your roly-polies your your american and oriental cockroaches your um earwigs stuff like that they feed on that plant matter okay. and it's just big fi big fish eats little fish so mm -hmm. the plants start to decay and the leaves start to decay it brings in these bugs once those bugs start eating on the plants then it brings in the spiders mm -hmm. it's just a vicious circle there. what comes and gets the spiders us i don't know us and <laughs> birds birds and... okay so number number six would be move your wood pile um i know this is important to do for termites we've talked about that a lot you don't want wood up against your house 
um, dead wood up against your house because uh, it can lead to a termite problem. But uh, talk to us about why that's important for spiders. It's a too. lot of the same thing as with the the leaves and stuff. Once those you have a wood pile sitting outside and it's getting rained on, there mm-hmm. is the decay is starting to happen. Bugs are starting to get on it and everything. Mm-hmm. Termites can get into it like other insects get to it and same theory is you're going to be drawing other insects to that wood pile spiders are going to be coming so is there a safe distance to move the wood pile is it just so that it's like six inches away and not touching the house or is it better to like have it all the way at the back of the yard like does it matter it's it's better if you can have it separated from the house at least like three to four foot from the house at least um sometimes it's not not always easy to do at least like a foot or so from the house so Mm -hmm. you don't by no means do you want it touching the house right the further away the better yep depends on what you got to work with though as far as room um, number seven is clean and declutter. Ooh, more cleaning, Sean. So, yeah, we're we're moving from the outside into the inside at least now. Okay. So you don't have all the other bugs around you while you're doing the inside. Okay. Uh, but yeah, just like I mentioned with the brown recluse, they are they're ambush predators they like to lay in waiting and just hide out and wait for something to run out Mm -hmm. taking away those hiding spots and those little cracks and crevices and like stuff laying on the floor all this little stuff where they can hide taking those away just helps out helps out by yeah it just it starts forcing them to go elsewhere mm-hmm. okay i like that um number eight store items with prevention in mind so what does that mean this because you just told us yeah. to get rid of our crap sean this <laughs> helps a lot with not only spiders but other insects where if at all possible use plastic bins use stuff that locks shut it keeps stuff from getting in there and also as cardboard sets it breaks down a lot of insects will they love to move into it like the corrugation and the co- the yeah. cardboard roaches love it roaches love it bed bugs love it a lot of stuff loves to get in there and after a while that cardboard will start to break down if it gets wet or if there's any mm-hmm. moisture issues and it can lead to more insects in that area and also gives the spiders places to hide and everything where Mm -hmm. in plastic bins they usually interlock with each other so they can be stacked neatly and out of the way and there's not these little small cracks and gaps and stuff like that not as many hiding places okay um so number nine on your list eliminate their food source we've talked a lot about how these nuisance insects that are out right now are as a major food source so what do they do so eliminating food source is just doing whatever you can to get the other insects out if the spiders have nothing to eat they're not going to be there and that moves us right into number 10 just call preferred pest control call preferred (laughs) yep we can take care of all this for you um around the inside the outside the whole thing Um, so you don't have to worry about spiders or any other feeder insects. That's the easy, that's the easy button. If you just want to do that instead of doing all the other nine steps, but well, the other nine steps are very (laughs) important. They are, they are. They'll definitely help, um, with a lot of things like you mentioned, not just spiders. So yeah, um, I can do a lot, but I'm not a miracle worker. Oh, come on. Get your (laughs) magic wand out. Well, thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, Thank you, Sean, for sharing your spider knowledge and expertise with us. I really appreciate your help with this. Um, If you guys have any questions, need help with spiders, don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help answer questions. If you don't know what kind of spider that you've got, shoot a picture, take a picture and text it to 816-279-2000. We do free spider identification. Um, Sean will get that.
that text, he'll be able to tell you if it's a brown recluse or some other kind of spider that you don't need to worry about. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you again for joining us and you guys have a great day.